Josh Pate spoke with Dave Hooker also about playing as Tennessee in the new A Sports College Football 25 game and also the important games on Tennessee's schedule and what to expect from the Vols this year. Josh Pate says that with Josh Heupel, he said this a while back, that they could be a perennial like playoff team, like sneaking in and upsetting teams. I think Tennessee has higher expectations than that. But let's get his thoughts as he spoke with Dave. Excited to visit with this guy. I've been wanting to talk to him for a bit because I'm not just going to stroke your patch and back. Good. You have a unique talent set, my man. You're 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 killing it. You're doing a great job. I absolutely love what you do. We are we are trying, and I um, I, I traffic in your stuff a lot. So I, I, well, I of course I of course feel mutual. Feeling is mutual there. Oh. It's just weird to um you know like I'm used to seeing. There's Dave. Let's see what he has to say. I'm always looking at a screen, and then all of a sudden, you're just walking down the corridors here. And, oh, he's a real person. He's got arms. He's got legs. My goodness, look at that. We'll be replaced by AI in three sure. years. Could, could be two weeks. Could be three weeks. Yeah, I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> right. Um, every Tennessee fan wants to uh, ask you what you think about Nico. He may be it's heard of him. I have, yeah. And I think you played uh, the EA Sports game. Mm -hmm. Have you played with him yet? We played... Uh, Story. It's not funny to you guys. Um, EA gave us clearance to play with their top 25 teams. Okay. Somehow, some way, Tennessee is not a top 25 team. And I want to stress, according to our fine friends at EA, wonderful job in the game. But uh, notwithstanding, the rankings were a little suspect. So we didn't get to play with Tennessee. Oh. Now, the real life human, Nico, yeah, like I have thoughts about him. We didn't get to play with him in the game. But I found it, I found it interesting when we went over there in the spring. We spent the day there, talked to Hype, and then you talk to as many staffers as you can. So it was really weird how everyone for two things, everyone to talk about better they feel defensively, uh, mentality, and yes, they feel like they've got better players. And then I want to ask about Nico. And anytime you're around a program that has like a high profile quarterback, they almost take for granted that all the questions have been asked. So like they actually don't lead with talking about him. Sure. So when they go, oh, oh, of course, yeah, we can talk about him too. And so talked about his physical skill set. He wouldn't be there if he didn't have that. What I thought was noteworthy was Josh Heupel sort of voluntarily continuing to pound the table for the intangibles, which normally we hear about Carson Beck or someone like that, someone who's been in the program, Garrett Nussmeyer at LSU, he's been in the program a long time. So we know that we've got what we need from the neck up. We hope we have what we need physically. But they, they're so adamant about that guy coming in in the NIL era where you have concerns that maybe the mentality is not where it needs to be. Maybe the motivation wasn't what it needed to be for him to come here. Maybe it's just a mercenary deal. None of that was present at all. And conversely, you know, they're talking about him the same way like – down at Miami, different situation because that's a transfer. But the moment they walk in the door, it's really, it's really noticeable who kind of grabs the program by the shirt collar and it's mine now. And so that doesn't guarantee anything. But as we've seen in the past, you certainly don't have a shot of winning a league like this without that. No, it's it's weird. Outside of that building, I believe outside that building, we started the bowl game. But it almost feels like a returning starter inside the building when you talk to these people. I would agree. I, if you didn't know any better, so if you had, if you had just been introduced to college football, let's say you're an NFL guy, so you know the game, but you don't know the sport of college football, and you went on that trip with me, or you lived in the market, and you just listened to the way the staffers talk on and off the record about him, you would think, what, what does that guy have, two years under his belt starting or something like that? That That's kind of the point that I was trying to make, too, is – the way they talk about him is very atypical for a first-time starter. It's normally an entrenched guy who's got multiple years of service. So, you know, there's there's all this talk all the time. You know, everyone talks about intangibles all the time, but intangibles is just like it's a word people throw out. They have no clue what they're talking about. When you have it, though, it makes all the stuff come together on Saturday. You know, when you're just watching and you just, we call it clicking or we call it synergy. Well, well, that's that's a nice buzzword. But all that means is those intangibles are there, both from an individual and a team aspect. And when you got it, amazing things can happen. Everybody's talented to certain degrees. Everyone's talented. 
How many times do we see five-star quarterbacks not pan out? Here's a fun exercise. Take the current active five-star quarterbacks, the guys that were five-star out of high school, and ask yourself how many of them have truly played in their college career at a five-star level. The list is very short. And I don't think that's thought because the recruiting industry whiffed on their physical capability. I just think it's because there's that intangible factor that's tough to master. So if you have it, you don't take it for granted. I think there's also that pressure to um, being that, and he seems to, to cope with that well. Your surprise team in the SEC will be on the job. Do you think? Do you think? I don't think Missouri qualifies. I'm going to go Texas A&M as my surprise team. Okay. I think they've flown under the radar. I think Elko's higher flew under the radar because I think DeBoer going to Alabama sort of, you know, muddied the water a little bit. Not in a bad way, but it's just that's where that's where all the oxygen in the room went. And Elko goes to a place that's very important to remember. He doesn't have to rebuild. Pretty rare to see a coach fired. It's not a retirement like at Alabama. A coach got fired, which normally means you got to torch the barn, kill the rat, so to speak. You got to rebuild it from the ground up. He doesn't need to. There, there are certain overhauls that need to be made, but just bringing a guy in that understands the organizational aspect, which his predecessor I don't think ever did, and he does, that's a godsend. But also, this is a guy who, from an eval and development um, position, nailed it at Duke. He's not going to forget how to do that. He just gets bottomless resources added to the coffers there. So I'm excited to see what he can do down the road. But also there's an outside shot that they're in the race way deeper into the season than anyone expects even in year one. Just a little bit before we say that, Nick Saban walks by. It's going to be weird being around the conference for that minute. It is, and it's it's going to be doubly weird to hear him do things like he did yesterday, uh, where he <laughs> predicts. He pre- I don't I don't know if Bama's going to make. I don't I don't trust the secondary depth that I recruited. I don't trust that. That was that was very interesting. It's good stuff. Yeah. That was Josh Pate on Dave interviewing with Dave Hooker. Some very interesting things. He does seem very high on Nico Ivaliava and the intangibles. I don't think that was a vague thing he said. I've heard some similar stuff too, but I've also heard some questions about him being a little shy. That's absolutely something that has to be addressed by Tennessee if Nico Iamaliava is going to pan out to be the quarterback they want him to be. At the same time, Texas A&M is a surprise team in the SEC. I agree. And Derek Owen uh, points out uh, he agrees too. Yeah. The biggest reason I agree, Josh Pate's a lot. This is where he's more diplomatic than me. Josh Pate is not unfriendly to coaches. He um, oftentimes is level head should prevail, even when coaches make dumb mistakes. I am the opposite. I am like most of these coaches should have already been fired and never been hired to begin with because I just don't think highly of them. And so I think there was always a market in football for a coach with book smarts, academic smarts, who actually understands the game. Because there is an understanding of probabilities when you're a head coach. Mike Elko is an Ivy League grad who understands the game of football. So I just think in general, because of that, his wits will be so far ahead of so many of the other people coaching, provided he doesn't try to micromanage too much. Because also you can struggle at your job even if you're smart because you're trying to micromanage too much. But I think Mike Elko's wits are so far ahead of the average IQ of an average coach that I think little basic in-game decisions will always favor him and Texas A&M while he's there. And I think that's an underrated thing that a lot of people are not paying attention to, which is that again, guys, most coaches are former athletes. Most former athletes don't aren't required to use think on their feet level intelligence. It's why John Adams and I have our football football IQ segment every fall. They make basic probability decisions that anybody of above average intelligence would know is not the smart thing to do in that moment. And the truth of the matter is it's because many times they are former athletes getting paid to use their minds because of their experience as former athletes. The truth is, If you're going to get paid to use your mind, it should be based on your mind. And more often than not, that's not the case with football. And it shows itself 
time and time again on Saturdays and Sundays where coaches just embarrass themselves with decisions they make. And I don't just mean the Mario Cristobal decision last year to run a play. What all you have to do is take a kneel down. Although that remains one of the most low IQ decisions any coach has ever made. And I don't know how anybody can still believe in Mario Cristobal for that. But that is very, that that's a very great point by Josh Pate. Derek asked if a and plays the horns because that may be upset city. Derek, you are right. That could be. And yes, they do. And don't give me any ideas. Josh Pate might be right. I might be betting on Texas A&M. Um, so this is a very interesting point. And it is because they have talent and they have a coach with um, a level of wits about him that immediately puts him way ahead of the vast majority of coaches in sports. I'll just say that. I'm sorry for being mean and unfair. People may come at me for that, but truth of the matter is that is how this works.